A lot of people overcomplicate IV biology. They think it's this overly complicated subject that requires a lot of memorization uh, when it really isn't. A lot of people, especially mess up, and I was one of these people, mess up in paper two, which is their long answer questions in section B. And I've seen people write pages and pages for their bio answers, and they still aren't getting full marks. And maybe you're one of those people, and you may wonder, why? And it's not because you don't understand the subject. It's not that. It's because you don't have correct exam technique. And that's hurting your marks. So through this video, hopefully you'll see how to answer paper two, especially section B questions with good technique. And you'll see how really simple the test is. It's not that hard once you kind of understand what you, the way you're supposed to answer these questions. So what is a short and distinct point? And this is an important concept. A short and distinct point is really, they're just points that are different from one another, right? I'm not reiterating anything I've said. I'm not re, you know, I'm not re-saying it. For example, John has a dog, John has a mohawk, John is a man. They're all different points. So if an IV bio paper question came out, describe John for five marks. These are some of the things I would write because they're all different from one another. But it's not only about writing distinct points. It's also about writing short and distinct points. And that just means don't overcomplicate your sentences. So let me kind of show you what I mean by illustrating it with the past paper question. So if you take this past paper question, I'll show you what's a bad response to it and what's a good response to it. So why don't we go on with the bad response first and we'll kind of critique it uh, and see what, what went wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so obviously this is a very lengthy response, but here's the thing, this response does get six out of six, it gets full marks. But notice this, this is a very lengthy response, very thorough, obviously you have a lot of knowledge about the subject, but contrast this to, a, to an answer where the concept of short and distinct points are applied. So you compare this with this. So these about seven lines, and how many marks did these did this answer get? Well, this answer got six marks also. Both answers, notice, both answers got full marks. The first one wasn't wrong, but here's something to consider. Which answer do you think takes less time to make? And therefore, which answer is more effective and is gonna help you in the exam by saving time to work on other questions? So, notice, I'm not just merely cutting words and, and you know, making this illegible. It, my second answer still has a clear line of reasoning, uh, but I avoid unnecessary fluff, so to speak, or sentences that are not going to contribute to my marks. The reason I'm confident that my answer has full marks is because it, or it contains seven distinct points. For example, in prophase, the nuclear membrane breaks down. That's one point. Also, the chromosomes undergo condensation, process going and sucrose, one point. Thinal microtubules form, another point. In metaphase, the chromosomes also necessary to chromatids, another point. Move to the equator of the cell where the spinal microtubules attach. In anaphase, the chromatids split, opposite poles, nuclear memory develops. This is one, two, three, four, five, seven points. Okay, I had seven distinct points. Once I wrote these seven points out, I was pretty confident that I'd get most of my marks uh, because you know I knew that I hit seven distinct points and these are the seven main points of the topic. Also, I didn't keep on rewriting the same sentence like the long description on chromosomes and sister chromatids I did, I gave in my first answer, which is around here. This was a very long, unnecessary description where I only need to have a brief mention of it to get it as a mark. So by the way, these two answers, I'm comparing it with the actual mark scheme of the question. So here's the thing, the point of this whole uh, illustration, this whole answers comparison, is that it's trying to show you that it's very easy to get descriptive in bio when you don't need to. One thing you should learn is to write effective answers. Write succinct answers full of main points from the topic. You know, your textbook has paragraphs upon paragraphs for mitosis, but you really only need to know around eight to 10 points to fully answer your answers, right? Uh, everything else in your textbook is for your understanding. You don't need to regurgitate uh, everything in the answer. And you'll notice if you have the Oxford textbook, a lot of the lines that are written 
are word for word lines from the explanation of mitosis from the book. Again, it's good for understanding, definitely, but not everything has to be in your answer. So therefore, really, if I were to to kind of to kind of edit this answer, what you would really need is. Okay, so hopefully that helped. Remember, short and distinct points. Short meaning, again, you don't have to write long, overly detailed sentences, but just sentences that are simple and are just complex enough that they convey the point across and nothing more. And distinct, obviously, meaning that you don't have to write the same points over and over again. You know, some people, they repeat the same point just to add a little bit of breadth to your answer uh, and just to make the answer a little bit long, but that's not going to help anyone, especially it's not going to help you get any marks. So if you implement these tips, obviously it's nothing new, but uh, I find that a lot of people, they do these mistakes and I was one of those people. Uh, but when I changed my writing method, I changed my answering method, it showed uh, that not only you can save time, but it can lead you to write more meter answers, so to speak. And trust me, when you see your classmates writing pages and pages of answers and you're there with your, you know, with your little mini paragraph, uh, don't don't start getting stressed, you know, laugh it out because if they need to write a full page for a nine mark answer, there's a very good chance that they're writing a lot of things that they don't need to or they just have really big handwriting. Okay, hopefully that helped. See you in the next video in this series.